Here at Loop, we like to take full advantage of the industrial PC and panel PC lineup from BNR. One feature that makes this so powerful is its hypervisor, which allows you to run a real-time operating system next to a general purpose operating system like Linux or Windows. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a Debian operating system on a panel PC from scratch that's compatible with the hypervisor. Then we'll install the hypervisor and run the real-time controls uh, from Automation Studio. So if you have the hardware, please follow along and let's get started. Let's take a quick look at system architecture. In the target system, hypervisor allows two operating systems to run concurrently and share resources. One of these operating systems is the real-time operating system that manages PLC or motion control and map services. Alongside this runs a general purpose operating system like Windows or Linux that allows more computer-based applications and services. My development system is Mac OS and BNR's Automation Studio running in a Windows virtual machine. I'll be using a panel PC from BNR for this demonstration. This has up to an i7 processor, multiple USB and Ethernet ports, and also has a PowerLink port. We'll need an empty CFast card and a CFast reader with a proper USB extension. With the CFast card connected, we'll open the disk utility, and I'm just going to add a partition to this empty CFast card. I'm going to resize this partition to 5 gigabytes, and I'm going to format it with MS-DOS. Once complete, we should have two partitions on here. Next, we need to go download our content. We'll go to bnrautomation.com, log in, follow the downloads link now for Software, Operating Systems, Debian 9, and here we'll need to download all of the zipped files that need to be added to our standard operating system. For the Debian operating system, follow the link in the description and download the AMD64 Disk 1. Insert an empty USB thumb drive and open up a disk imager. I'm going to use Belena Etcher for this. We'll select the Debian file. Select your USB thumb drive and flash this. This is going to be the bootable Debian image for your panel PC. Once this is complete, you can eject the thumb drive and we're going to go now to the panel PC where we install the CFast card, the blank partition CFast card, a USB keyboard and mouse, and our USB thumb drive. Now you can power on your panel PC. Now once power has been applied, you can hold the delete key on the keyboard to go to the boot menu of the panel PC. With the boot menu open, we go to setup utility. We need to make sure that the BIOS is at least 1.12. We also need to go to advance and make sure that hypervisor is enabled under OEM features. And finally, we go to boot and make sure that it's UFI boot type. We exit and save the changes, which should take us back through the boot process. Hold delete again, and then go to boot manager. Select the UFI OS, which is our thumb drive. I can use the graphical install to install my Debian operating system. I'm going to move quickly through some of these standard features like keyboard setup, networking, etc. It's okay to point your network towards your DHCP. The host name will default to Debian. You can obviously customize this if you like. After the host name, I just need to add root passwords. The root user will always be root, but we have to add root passwords here. Next, we need to add a standard user. I'm going to call this loop, and I'm going to add passwords to the password fields here as well. Next, you'll select your time zone. I'm in the Pacific time zone, so I'll select this. And now we need to go partition our disk. So I'm going to select manual partition. I'm going to go delete the largest partition in here and free up the space. Once I've deleted that, now I can use guided partitioning and just point it towards the largest continuous free space. I allow it to partition the disk, and now it's going to build the Debian image into that largest open partition. Now that we've partitioned, we have to download the actual packages for Debian. So we select the mirror, enter through this menu, and once this is all downloaded, then we have to select what software we want to install by default. I do want a desktop, but I want it to be light, so I'm going to diselect XFCE. I'm going to select LXDE. I'm going to diselect the print server and continue. Once this final step completes, your operating system is ready. Remove your thumb drive and reboot your panel PC. Now I need to install the BNR specific packages. These are the resources we downloaded from BNR Automation website. I took all the deb packages, put them in the same file, and wrote a simple script that allows me to install them all with one command line. I'm going to zip this file, and I'm going to copy it over to my panel PC. I'll select Compress. 
Because I'm on Mac, I can just secure copy this zip folder. If you're using Windows, you can use WinSCP, but we're gonna just SCP downloads brbuilder.zip to my host name at my panel PC's IP address. And we're just gonna drop this in the loop home folder. Once this is done, I can now SSH into my panel and we can run all the operations remotely. I'm gonna unzip this folder first and I'm going to uh, go explore that and just make sure that my script is there. So I have brbuilder.sh. Now I can just execute this uh, with sh dot slash brbuilder. Since I'm not root, I need to uh, move into super user to execute this because it is an install script. So I'll reissue this again as super user. And now you can see it's pulling and installing all of the packages that I need. Now we're pretty much done with the initial setup of the Linux side. All that's left for us to do here now is to reboot the panel, which we can do from the command line with the sudo reboot. Now I'll log back into my Debian uh, system with loop. Now the final preparation for this is we need to delete the partition that we created earlier that was just a placeholder. I'm going to open up a shell, I'm going to enter super user, and I'm going to apt install gparted. Once this is installed, I'm going to run this, and this is a partitioning tool for Linux. I'm simply going to click that empty partition, delete it, and now we've got space for the hypervisor. Confirm and close. Now we can go to our Windows environment. Now in Windows, I'm going to create a new Automation Studio project. I'm going to call this Hello Hypervisor. And this is going to be the project that we base our hypervisor install off of. Use a standard configuration, and I'm going to use the search window to search for my hardware, which is a panel PC. 24 inch touch panel with the Celeron processor. With this open, I'm going to now go to the physical view and I'm going to right click on the IPC level, select configuration, then navigate to the bottom of the configuration to enable hypervisor. I'm also going to allocate 2 gigs of DRAM from the 8 gigs available on my processor. Hardware ports need to be assigned as well, so we're going to assign one Ethernet port and two USB ports to the general purpose operating system, and one Ethernet port and two USB ports to the AR embedded hypervisor operating system. You can do this by right-clicking and going to configuration, then picking the assignment. We'll leave both Ethernet ports as DHCP clients as well. Now we need to build a USB thumb drive install for hypervisor. In the menu, select Project, Project Installation, and Create USB Install. Follow the prompts in the dialog. Now you can insert this USB thumb drive to the panel PC. Navigate to the File Manager, find the install script, and install it with your favorite package manager. This is the final driver needed for the Linux side to run the hypervisor. Now without removing the thumb drive, reboot your panel PC. This should now boot into the hypervisor install menu select install, click next, and select install again. I didn't capture the full install process in this video, but it'll reboot and restart several times. Now to test this, I've pre-written an example application. I'm gonna send an MQTT message through a broker on the Linux side and boot an application. I've got some sample code here, and I'm going to now transfer this to my device. I click transfer, I'm gonna do this over ethernet, and we get the progress bar saying that it's complete. Now I'll open a watch window, toggle a bit. This MQTT message will trigger an application. In future videos, we'll explore shared memory and other communication protocols, but you can see the tight integration between AR Embedded and Linux. This marriage of a general purpose operating system and a real-time operating system allows you to get very creative with the solutions that you build. So in future videos, we'll use this to build uh, machine learning, vision applications, uh, cloud-connected things, etc. So. Uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching.